Pizza was pretty much invented in Naples, and between going there and other places in southern Italy, I've determined that your home oven can hit the bottom end of the 300 degree window that's perfect for cooking pizza. And your barbecue grill, that can hit the hotter end. You're telling me that the ideal temperature to cook pizza is between 500 and 800 degrees? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you. Prove it. Okay. Ah, ok, 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 può girare un po'. Sì, scusi, signore, Dimmi. sono venuto da New York e sì. volevo sapere quanti gradi ci sono nel forno. È intorno ai 6 700 gradi. 100 gradi? Sì, 100 gradi. 100 gradi. Tanti allora. Sono da là. Now 700 degrees centigrade seemed like an awful lot to me, so I got in the car, drove a few hours south to a mountaintop town called Trachina. They're still influenced by the Naples techniques, but they're much more humble about the facts. So if the Italians are cooking at a, such a high temperature and cooking their pizzas in such a short period of time, why do most online recipes and cookbooks tell me to cook at a low temperature at the bottom of the oven? Well, either they don't know any better or they're afraid of taking their oven to the max. What are they afraid of taking it to the max for? I don't know. Let's all take it to the max. Let's take it to the max. Excuse me, sir, do you take your kayaking to the max? Yeah, I like to get weird. Let's dig right in with the dough. I've created a no-knead dough, which means you don't need a mixer and you don't need to knead it. So we start off with two cups of bread flour, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, quarter teaspoon of instant yeast. Doesn't need to be proofed and it works great. To that, we're gonna add one cup of water. This is the only part you need to work on. I like to go along the edge and bring it in, smash it down from the top, see that? That was about one minute of manpower. Now around the outside, I like to put about half an ounce of olive oil. This sort of solidifies our dough as a ball here. The next step is to cover this and wait six hours. Six hours, Frank? Oh man, that's so many hours. It's not though. If you go to the supermarket and buy their frozen dough, it takes six hours for it to fully defrost. I call it the six hour dough because it needs at least six hours. I've gone over 24 hours it just keeps getting better and better. Put whatever you want on top of the pizza. Look at what these guys like. La mia pizza preferita è il filetto, mozzarella di bufala e pomodorini. Quattro formaggi, margherita. Margherita perché? Russel e patatina. Con il russel. Come ti piace la pizza? A me piace la pizza margherita. Sai perché? No. Perché la mozzarella è bianca. Il basilico è verde, i pomodori sono rossi e questi colori sono i colori della bandiera italiana. Now after your six hours are up, you're gonna want to put your oven as high as you can put it. Second rack from the top, put your pizza stone. That way you're allowing physics to work with you. You really got to use a lot of flour. Put some flour on your hands like so. Okay, this is half. So the, uh, the recipe I gave you is for two. So eyeball it in half. Flour it around like this. If you don't use enough flour, it will stick to your hands and become a disaster very, very quickly. Put it in a little bit of a, you know, a round shape and kind of flatten it out a little bit. Give it 10 minutes. This is gonna allow the gluten to relax and when you roll it out, it won't shrink as much back. 10 minutes have elapsed. Make sure you still got flour on your hands. Just press it out as much as you can, rotating it, stretching it, 
flipping it. I like to smack it back and forth a little like this just to remove a little bit of the flour. So now you get out your rolling pin. What's that you say? You don't have a rolling pin? Yes, you do. Do you have an empty bottle of wine? Coat the outside of the bottle with the flour and just go like this here, okay? Okay, wonderful. A little flour on top of the pala. Stretch it out. This is where you can kind of make it as round as you'd like. And there's no need to build up the uh, crust, as you can see from this high-speed photography demonstration. The most important thing now is to shake and make sure that this is loose. You want that loose. Because when you go to slide it in the oven, if it's stuck, you got big problems. Cut an X into the top of your tomato and place them into boiling water for the time. Sing a happy birthday to yourself. Happy birthday to you. When you're done singing happy birthday, put them in the freezing water. They should peel themselves, but if they're being naughty, peel them the rest of the way and cut them in half. Now sink your thumbs into the seedy, fleshy parts of the tomato. Push them together, up and out. Throw all this terrible excuse for tomato internals away. We do not need it. Cut up the rest of the tomato. Mix it with olive oil and salt. Welcome, my friends, to the land of Simplicità. Stay away from dried oregano, black pepper, and other things like this. They just confuse our simple sauce. You know, the possibilities for this sauce, they are endless. You can put it with the pasta. You can put it with the eggs. You can put it in the taco. You can put it on the pizza. You can eat it by itself. And in the refrigerator, it lasts for one week. So your time is never wasted. Fresh tomato sauce, you can do it. Mr. Mozzarella, Please, tell us about cheese. I like to use fresh mozzarella. Either di bufala or fior di latte. If you like shredded mozz or pizza cheese, by all means, use it. Its low moisture content allows it to melt in an expansive manner. Covering the entire face of your pizza. It's marvelous looking and it's most certainly the American way. The only problem is that it's not delicious, which is why I endorse fresh cheese. It can give you that extra little push to make that certain someone or something feel that extra little bit special. Don't forget the basil, sweet flavors with a maze, yo. That basil is like the Italian flag without the color green. Simply preposterous. I like the Jamaican thing first. It's good. There's mushrooms, mozzarella, tomato, basil, caramelized onions, mushrooms, sliced garlic, salami picante, basil, sliced lemon. Pizza pie. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Delicioso. <laughs> now that is my favorite. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Best is the lemon one. You didn't taste this one yet. That looks amazing. How about some pepper on there? It's, 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 but this is margarita. This is margarita. Yourself with this one. 